Welcome back guys. It's craft time. So in today's video, we are going to try to take a $12 tapestry from Amazon and turn it into a big, beautiful wall piece for my daughter's room. So she has this big space above her changing table that I just can't figure out what to do with. I had a piece that used to go above it, but it's really heavy and we moved and now have sheetrock and I'm just worried that it's not going to be stable enough up there and at some point is going to come down. So I've been trying to figure out what to do. I already did like a like geometric thing on the opposite wall, um, just painting it on. So I can't, I don't really want to do that again. But I did find this $12 tapestry off of Amazon that I wanted to turn into a big like faux canvas to have a very large um, picture that will take up a lot of space but for not a lot of money. So I think all in all it's cost me about $20 for this project. So I will put in the description a list of supplies that you would need if you wanted to try this. Um, tapestries are so fun because you can customize them or you can buy something that was pre-made like I did. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. All right, to get started, I'm just laying the tapestry out. I have my tape measure out. I already know that I wanna do a three foot by four foot um, frame for it. So I'm just using the tape measure to get an idea of where that actually lays on the canvas and what parts will show and what won't, just so I can kind of map it out in my head. And now I'm going to iron it. Now that all of the creases are out of it, I have grabbed my two pieces of wood. I have one that's six foot long and one that is eight foot long. I am measuring it to cut them in half. However, they are supposed to be exact, but obviously sometimes that doesn't happen. So my six foot piece is just a little longer. So I just make sure that I have two even three foot sections. And then I do the same with the eight foot and I just mark them so that I can get them cut. I'm using this big old saw because my boyfriend happens to have one, but you can easily use a hacksaw and just cut this down by hand if you don't have anything big like this. Next, I'm just laying all of my pieces out on the floor and lining them up just to make sure that they all fit the way that they're supposed to and are the correct lengths. And then I'm going to be drilling pilot holes and screwing them all together. I also considered using nails, but I didn't have nails that I thought would be long enough to make sure that it was secure. So don't feel like you have to use screws. You can use nails. Um, maybe if you do that, throw some wood glue on there just to help out. But this is the step that I decided I would do and because I already had the materials to use the screws.
I did have my boyfriend come in and check my work to make sure that it was sound, um, to make sure that I lined it up properly and that everything was secure, just because I'm not always the best with power tools. So as you can see, my frame is not sitting flat on the ground. That's because I accidentally forgot to check the wood when I picked it up and it was warped. So whenever I put it all together, it just wasn't sitting evenly. Um, I tried to set some heavy stuff on there to help flatten it out just a little bit. It didn't work, but that's okay. I mean, if this happens to you, you could always have it sit there for a lot longer. Um, but I have a plan to try to make that work and not be a big issue for me. So I'm just going to move on and clean up and then we'll get started on adding the tapestry to the frame. So when doing this step, you want to make sure that your tapestry is as flat out on the floor as it can be. I know it's not going to be perfect, but just try your best to make it as flat and with as little wrinkles as possible. The next thing I'm doing is I'm just taking my tape measure and I'm just measuring the halfway points on each side. That way I kind of have a visual of where, where's the middle of the tapestry and have I got off center at all. Um, so I'm going to do that with the tapestry and also with my frame so that I know where the middle points of the tapestry are, where the middle points of the frame are, and then I'm going to start moving the frame around to where I think is most centered and what I think would look good when we flip it over. So I have this design here and if it were just like a landscape picture or something it wouldn't be as important but I want to make it as even as I can. So I know that my sides of the big circle are going to show but then on the top it's going to fold over the frame some so I'm trying to make sure that those are as even as they can be. Now it's time to secure the tapestry to the frame. So to do this, I'm using a staple gun. I am going to be folding the fabric over, making sure that it's not super tight, but that it's you know pretty secure over that piece of wood, and I'm just stapling it along the back. So I'm only going to be doing half of the staples that I need at this moment, just so I can make sure that if I have to take it off for some reason, it's not going to take forever. So once you do the one side, you want to go to the opposite side of that. So that's what I've done. I've moved around to the other side. I'm pulling it to where I know that it's a little bit more taunt. You don't want to pull it too hard because you don't want to create a bunch of wrinkles. But you just do the same thing. You, you fold it over. I was just kind of using my thumbs to kind of smooth it out and pull it a little tight around the wood and then stapling it again. Now that I've done those two sides, I'm moving over to the other sides. Now when you do this, you want to make sure that you fold your corners in as if you were folding a present. So what I did is I made sure that it was a nice crisp angle on the corner and then I proceeded to just, like I said, fold it in like it were a gift. And then I secured one corner and then I slowly started moving up to the next corner Again, just making sure that it's pretty tight, that the wrinkles were out, that it was taunt, but not super tight to where it would mess with the frame or create any weird wrinkles. And then I just moved over to the other side. 
So you can see here I just folded it up. I'm trying to make sure that it's folded and looks decent on each side because you will be able to see the sides of the tapestry. You won't see the back, but so you want it to have a nice crisp edge and just look neat. So this is what she looks like. We're going to flip it back over now and go ahead and get some scissors. Fabric scissors are preferred, but it doesn't really matter. And you're just going to cut off all of the excess fabric. You don't necessarily have to do this. I just did it so that whenever I'm trying to hang it on the wall or if it moves a little, that that fabric doesn't drop down and then you can see it. It just gives it a little bit of a cleaner look from the front and sides. So just go around and cut it all off. And then after that, we're going to go back through and any of the loose pieces that are hanging off or any of the parts where it needs a little bit more secure, we're gonna go ahead and put staples in there. And then we're going to add our whatever you've chosen to hang it. I use D loops and we're gonna put those on there to make sure that it can hang securely and then we will be done with the project. Here it is, finished product. I love it, I'm so excited about it. My daughter's not home right now, but I'm really excited to see how she reacts to it. She's really used to this being a blank wall, so she'll definitely be checking it out, probably trying to rub it and <laughs> just be curious overall. But I love this project, it was so much fun. I can't believe I found a tapestry, one that was that cheap, two that matched her room perfectly. The colors are perfect, the theme is perfect, it's just perfect. I love it, love it, love it. So my suggestions or final thoughts for you guys is I didn't think to check my wood. I mean, I know better. I've been taught that, but I just grabbed it and went. I was in a hurry and just went on my way. Make sure if you do it, you stop and check to make sure it's level and that it's not a warped piece. As you saw, mine kind of was teeter-tottering because it wasn't flat whenever I actually put the frame together, but I fixed that with some Velcro command strips. So the D loops are holding it at the top. And then um, down here in the bottom in the corner, I did the Velcro command and I just kind of stuck it to the wall. Just leaned on it for a while to make sure that it stays. But I think it turned out really well. I, I just adore it. <laughs> I hope that you guys, if you try it, that it works out for you, um, that this can be helpful for you if you have any questions about what I did or if I left something out, I'm more than happy to answer it. If you have any suggestions on what would have made it easier for me, I would love to hear that too. And then any future project suggestions that you may have or want to, you know, if you want, have a project in mind you want to try out and you want to guinea pig someone, I'm here for you. <laughs> so I'll bring you guys in for a closer look. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. It's crap. What's time. up, YouTube? <laughs> no, just kidding. I hate you so much. Could you be any louder? <laughs> Grounded, young man. <laughs> Reset.